Now I am going to discuss echocardiogram in two types of atrial septal defects that is secondum ASD and ostium primum ASD. This is an echocardiogram in ostium secundum AST. You can see that the defect is in the middle of the interatrial septum. This is the subcostal view which images the interatrial septum best because the septum is perpendicular to the image plane. That is the transducer is sending beam like this and septum is almost perpendicular. So that's the best way to image a structure in a two-dimensional echocardiogram. This is the right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle, interventricular septum, right ventricle. This is right ventricular free wall. This will be the left ventricular wall. And this is the atrial septal defect, secondum atrial septal defect. There is a good rim above and a good rim below so that it will be suitable for a device closure of the atrial septal defect. Occluda has two flanges, one on the right atrial side and on the left atrial side. So a good rim on all margins is useful to retain the device in situ after deployment. Otherwise, if it can break loose, it can get embolized into the circulation. This is an ostium primum atrial septal defect. You can see that there is no rim of tissue between the atrioventricular walls, the mitral valve here, tricuspid valve here. There is no rim between the AST and the AV walls, while the rest of the atrial septum is intact. Left atrium, right atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle. This is from the apical four chamber view. The transducer is at the apex of the heart and you can see all the four chambers as in a textbook description of the heart. Here you can see the, these translucencies are the pulmonary veins draining into the left atrium. Usually you can see only three pulmonary veins in most of the echocardiographic views. From two dimensional echocardiographic images we move on to color doppler imaging. This is again atrial septal defect is seen here. You can see a left to right shunt colored as red. Red because the blood is moving towards the transducer. In Doppler echo color Doppler red is the color coding for flow towards the transducer from the left atrium across the AST into the tricuspid valve and right ventricle. So the flow is almost in direction towards the transducer. It is a slightly tilted apical four chamber view. The apex is slightly towards the left. Left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium, atrial, uh, left atrium. So AST is seen here. This is the left to right shunt across the atrial septal defect seen by color Doppler echocardiogram. In this image, you are seeing reversal of flow across the atrial septal defect. Instead of the red color, it is blue. It is moving away from the transducer. You know, Doppler echo is uh, by targeting the movement of the red blood cells. Doppler echo is taken by calculating the Doppler shift from the moving red blood cells. So, if the red blood cells are moving away from the transducer which is kept here, then the color coding will be blue on color Doppler echocardiogram. Side by side you can see the atrial septal defect. Usually right to left shunt occurs in atrial septal defect with severe pulmonary hypertension and this is an Eisenmenger situation. But in ASTs it is also possible to have transient right to left shunt when there is a slight difference between the right atrial and left atrial pressures during respiratory phases. Transient right to left shunt need not be due to Eisenmenger syndrome and that is one of the mechanisms for paradoxical embolism that is venous thromboembolism moving on to the systemic side. Suppose there is a thrombus coming into the right atrium from the inferior vena cava that can move into the left atrium across the mitral wall into the systemic circulation 
producing systemic embolism which is known as paradoxical embolism in atrial septal defect with transient right to left shunt this is color doppler imaging in ostium primum ast you can see the ast across which there is left to right shunt across the ostium primum ast just near the mitral and tricuspid wall in ostium primum ast there can be associated tricuspid wall or mitral wall disease cleft anterior mitral leaflet is one of the associations of a primum ast and that can produce mr which has not been shown in this figure this is tricuspid regurgitation tr reverse flow from the right ventricle to the right atrium the flow is blue because it is away from the transducer it has multiple colors mosaic mosaic color indicates turbulence when the right ventricle contracts and pushes blood into the right atrium that's usually a higher velocity jet which produces turbulence if there is pulmonary hypertension the velocity will be more which can be assessed by the usual doppler not the color doppler the spectral doppler display which will show the velocity of the jet and from that you can estimate right ventricular systolic pressure and indirectly the pulmonary arterial pressure in this case we cannot be very sure whether this is due to a cleft in the tricuspid leaflet or whether it is due to pulmonary hypertension in primum ast it can be due to a defect in the tricuspid valve also but more classical is a mitral regurgitation due to cleft anterior mitral leaflet and tr can occur also without either pulmonary hypertension or defect structural defect in the tricuspid leaflet even in normal individuals there can be mild tricuspid regurgitation which is not of much significance evaluation of atrial septal defect especially the rims are better done by trans esophageal echocardiography and this is a trans esophageal echocardiography transducer will be in the esophagus just behind the left atrium and this is the right atrium inter atrial septum you can see the defect is seen very well the advantage for trans esophageal echo is that in an adult when a trans thoracic echo is done sometimes if the echo window is not good inter atrial septum may not be imaged well this is the trans esophageal echocardiogram you can see the aorta here inter atrial septum atrial septal defect right atrium and you can see that the aortic rim is deficient here hardly any aortic rim for the inter atrial septal defect so trans esophageal echocardiography showing a single ast sometimes you can have more than one atrial septal defects here you can see one defect here another defect here with a small area of tissue in between dual atrial septal defect and the total length of the defect will be quite high for a device closure this may not be an ideal case for device closure of atrial septal defect for a device closure you need good rims around and the size should not be too much here you can see the rims are also not very good and size is too much then there's an intervening tissue here which can all interfere with the device closure procedure this is a fluoroscopic image of device closure of atrial septal defect the venous sheath has been introduced into the inferior vena cava and right atrium and this is the delivery cable still attached to the device this is one flange of the device this is the other flange and there is a waste in between so you can understand that this is the region which will go and attach on the rims of the ast you have a rim uh, the flanges here as well as here it is all around so these flanges if they have to catch the rims there should be sufficient rim for the ast then only the device will be seated very well and it will not embolize but if the rims are not good that portion suppose this rim is not good in this region this will not catch here and then it is likely to embolize this is before device delivery 
once the device is checked well and uh, the defect has been closed properly then this will be unscrewed and then the device will be remaining there.